Okay, thank you. So, now I'll tell you why I said even better. Okay. Uh, as I said, it was premiered in uh, 1918. Uh, about a week, either before or after, I don't remember, there was another premiere that took place, that of the first symphony. Do you know the first symphony? Does anybody know? Yes? Oh, I don't know, typical Prokofiev? Huh? Typical Prokofiev? Yes, it's typical Prokofiev. Does it have any kind of nickname? Classical. Yes, classical, classical symphony. And in fact, the first symphony is written as a well, I would not say a mock classical symphony, because I think it treats the, it treats the material and the style too affectionately for this, but it certainly will never be uh, mistaken for a classical symphony of Mozart or Haydn. And I think it's pretty clear that the third movement, which you've just played, is also uh, an attempt to actually, it can be termed as a neoclassicism, if not for the fact that uh, Neoclassicism appeared a little bit later, officially, a little bit later, but it is definitely you know. This is is a kind of a irreverent mocking of of Alberti bass uh, and. I think what it needs, this movement, well, first of all, this movement needs a clear reference to the classical mm -hmm. uh, style. Then it clearly not meant as a nice, uh, cute, uh, movement in classical style. He writes that it's very interesting. Allegro con brio, ma non leggero. So it is intentionally much more uh, kind of uh, meaty, uh, the whole writing. And I think it is this con brio should be much more in your face. Mm -hmm. And for this, I must say that the very end, I, I cannot play it now, all these jumps mm -hmm. which you take with the right hand, of course, it makes it much more secure, but it completely changes the whole idea uh, of this in your face of devil may care mm -hmm. uh, which i think uh, what we have in this movement mm -hmm. can we try again please from the beginning Much better. What I would suggest, he writes fortissimo, forte, and you try to, to get it. 
I don't think it quite succeeds because uh, there is a lot of kind of pressure uh, in what you are doing. I would play more out of the piano than into the piano. Out of the piano. Can you do it once again, please? Yeah. I would not be too heavy here. Ma non leggero doesn't necessarily mean sempre pesante. Okay, so... Uh, and maybe less pedal. Okay, once again, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, piano, but very clear fingertips. And again, from the piano, out of the piano. Yes, much better, much better. I think there is much more character, much more brilliance, much more conbrio. Keep going, please. It's staccato, without pedal. Yeah, un unfortunately you slur by two. Let's start once again. We start in pianissimo. Come to mezzo forte. Next phrase starts in piano. Okay. Okay, what's the melody here? Right, so let's hear it. Move the fifth finger. Yes, but not... Feeling this dissonant grace note, right? Pianissimo, pianissimo. Yeah, and again, bright, articulated and out of the piano. Clear fingers. No, no, this time it's forte and it's different. Okay. Yeah, 
Jesus. And now, this is a completely different, very sweet and simple uh, melody. Let's try it to sing, but very kind of transparently, uh, innocently, and again, not ta, pa, 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 okay? Okay, very good, very good. Let's do it once again. Uh, it's like two wind instruments, right? Suppose uh, oboe. And maybe a clarinet. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's very difficult. Let it sing, please. Good, good, very good. But do not slow down. Tara da 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 bolder to to the top note. Yeah, no, it's piano, right? This is piano. Uh, uh, how is And this is mezzo piano. And then pianissimo. Right, so this needs to, to stand out a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay, so from here, please. It's too mushy. Can we hear?
Ya, sí. Ah, ok, 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 ok. Not. Out. Out of the piano. Okay. All right. I think it's much better. I think it's much more in, uh, in this character of this movement. So uh, here maybe I would like to emphasize another thing which became quite clear. And this is that Prokofiev really writes what he wants, writes uh, be it dynamically, tempo-wise, or articulation-wise. And I think we need to, uh, to be able to make all these distinctions very clearly. And another thing is, it is important, it, it's not only in Prokofiev, in general, we are playing a polyphonic instrument, whether you like it or not. It's a polyphonic instrument. You don't like it, switch to flute. <laughs> <laughs> then you do not have any problem, only one line. But uh, if you play piano, you always, always have to deal with hierarchy of different uh, elements. You always have to deal what to give preference to and what to hide. And for this you need to, first of all, to have the mastery of, of the touch. And uh, also to know clearly, very clearly, what you want to hear and what uh, you uh, uh, and what you better hide. As for the touch, this ability to voice is extremely important and I would uh, encourage you to work on it, to exaggerate, uh, for instance, when you play pa ra ra di pam pam pa ra ram exaggerate, play fort at the top, and uh, piano uh, the accompanying 16th. Uh, there are all kind of uh, exercises to Im improve your voicing. One of the simplest exercises I could suggest would be something like this. Can you do it? No. Yeah, so your third finger is not able to do it. So that's something we can practice. If you want a, a little bit to torture yourself and to t entertain, try this. <laughs> it's very helpful. Okay, thank you very much.